From Sinai to the death of Jesus, about how many animals should Israel have offered at the appointed times? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Numbers on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Numbers chapter 29. We're going to be reading from verses 26 to 40. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 29, beginning of verse 26. On the fifth day, present nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number, according to the ordinance. Also, one goat is a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the sixth day, present eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, by their number, according to the ordinance. Also, one goat is a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day, present seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, by their number, according to the ordinance. Also, one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the eighth day, you shall have a sacred assembly. You shall do no customary work. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One bull, one ram, seven lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs, by their number, according to the ordinance. Also, one goat is a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. These you shall present to the Lord at the appointed feasts, besides your vowed offerings and your freewill offerings, as your burnt offerings and your grain offerings and your drink offerings and your peace offerings. So Moses told the children of Israel everything, just as the Lord commanded Moses. In the last two chapters, we've been dealing with the appointed daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly sacrifices that Israel was to offer. This was on top of the sacrifices that were offered by individuals for various reasons. From Sinai to the time of Christ, we've kept a running total of how many animals this would have been over a period of 1,479 years, assuming the sacrifices didn't end during the period of captivity. So far, through the fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the number was about 1,544,076 lambs, 131,631 bulls, 45,849 rams, and 39,933 goats. Now keep in mind, none of these animals remitted sin, for the bloods of bulls and goats could not do so. However, they obtained the promise of forgiveness for those in Israel who walk by faith. Let's now conclude the Feast of Tabernacles by looking at the last three days of the feast. But just in case you didn't watch our last lesson, let's refresh our memories as to what this feast was by rereading Leviticus 23, 33-43, where the instructions for this feast were first given. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to, an off to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything on its day, besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. 
It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The book of Leviticus gave Israel the generic instructions for this feast, while the book of Numbers filled in the details concerning the sacrifices. As we discussed in the last lesson, the sacrifices at this feast were the most costly simply because of the number of animals required. We stated that most likely this was because this was a feast of thanksgiving for the harvest, so God wanted Israel to understand that God is their provider. The Feast of Tabernacles itself was a seven-day feast. However, on the eighth day, there was to be a holy convocation, a day of rest, where Israel would gather to worship God and offer one final sacrifice. On days five through seven of the feast, nine, eight, and seven bulls were to be offered respectively as the number of bulls decreased by one for each day of the feast. The number of rams, lambs, and goats did not decrease, remaining at two rams, 14 lambs, and one goat as a sin offering each day, along with the appropriate drink offering for each animal. So far, so for the total of the Feast of Tabernacles, 70 bulls, 14 rams, 98 lambs, and 7 goats were offered. On the eighth day, the day of holy convocation, the sacrifice of the animals returned to its normal amount of one bull, one ram, seven lambs, and one goat as a sin offering. In total then, if my math is correct, from Sinai to Christ, the total number of animals that should have been offered at the appointed times were 1,616,547 lambs, 168,606 bulls, 56,202 rams, and 45,849 goats. That's on top of individual sacrifices. What I hope this total does for Christians is put into perspective just how valuable and powerful the sacrifice of Christ was, the once-for-all sacrifice that paid the price for sin. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 30, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.